We have our two permanent secretaries for Ministry of Home Affairs, Dr. Tlesha Lenga, seated on the left hand side of the Honorable Minister, and also Madam Pamela Kavamba, seated on the right hand of the Honorable Minister. We also have the Deputy Permanent Secretary, Mr. Nangimela. We have as well the Deputy Inspector General of Police, Mr. Marco Mulenga, the Director General of the Immigration Service, Mr. Mola. We also have the Director of Operations, who is representing the Commissioner General for Correctional Service, and this is Mr. Yumbe. We have the Director for DNA, Mr. Kankasa, and we have the Director of Operations for the Police Service. Should I simply say senior police officers present and uh, members of the press. I will not actually say anything. Let me just invite the permanent secretary, Dr. Chiesha Mulenga, to say a few words before he could finally invite the Minister of Home Affairs to address all of us. Good morning, everyone. Honorable Minister, welcome to your press briefing. Thank you. Yes. Uh, allow me to simply say all protocols observed. Uh, this press conference has been called so that uh, the Honorable Minister can, through this press briefing, provide an update to the nation on the state of the security situation in the country. So it is uh, devoted to security matters. After the Minister's address, uh, members of the press will be given an opportunity to ask questions on security matters, not other matters. So this is dedicated to security matters, and we stick to, to that. With that introduction, it is now my uh, pleasure to invite the Honorable Minister of Home Affairs, Honorable Stephen Kampiongo, Member of Parliament, to address the press briefing. Honorable Minister. Thank you so much, uh, Piers. Um, yeah, Mr. Piero, this next time you call for a press briefing, let's start on time. Um, uh, it shouldn't be known. I always wanted to inspect the Deputy Inspector General of Police, the Senior Officer from Correction Service, Director General from the Immigration Department, and all the senior members of staff from the Ministry of Home, Home Affairs. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Good morning. You haven't had breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> Allow me to thank you most sincerely for coming for the press briefing on the security situation in the Republic of Zambia. This statement is somewhat long overdue, given the various events with a bearing on the public security and safety that my government has had to deal with over the last few months. At the beginning of the year 2018, for example, our country was ravaged by a severe cholera outbreak, which occurred almost concurrently with severe partial drought. The latter might have had a significant might have a significant impact on our crop yields and consequently food security. We also experienced a slight deterioration of public safety as we again witnessed a series of ritual killings and a general spike in crime, especially in the high density residential areas of Lusaka City. In the rural areas, 
illegal exploitation of natural resources, especially the Mkula tree and illegal gold mining require close attention to prevent wanton destruction of our precious natural resources. Equally of concern is the continued drift towards illegal conduct by groups opposed to the democratically elected government. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, to address the cholera outbreak whose epicenter was the uh, city of Lusaka, my government deployed our defense and security personnel to help clean up our cities and towns. The joint operations of our defense and security personnel also helped restore order, particularly with regard to upholding the Public Health Act and its regulations that govern trading in the cities and towns. My government, as to that end, successfully restored the observance of public health, public health rather, act and its regulations and law and order in general. Ladies and gentlemen, given the success of the operations mounted by the defense and security personnel, allow me to seize this opportunity to commend our gallant women and men in uniform for the job well done. They accomplished their mission and helped to restore order in the central business districts of our cities and towns. The Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces, His Excellency the President of the Republic of Zambia, Mr. Edgar Chagwalungu, has since directed the defense personnel to return to their regular duties of protecting our territorial integrity and playing their usual supportive role to our security institutions. Our gallant troops accordingly stood down from the urban operations with effect from midnight of 23rd March 2018. It should, however, be noted that the internal security personnel shall continue to vigor vigorously enforce law and order in our cities and towns. The withdrawal of the defense personnel, therefore, should not result in the return to the dark days of unregulated street vending, which undermines public security and personal safety of law-abiding members of the public. So the presence of the police shall continue to be uh, uh, present on the streets. The internal security services led by the Zambia Police Service, like I'm saying, have therefore taken over the regular patrols of our cities and towns. These institutions must ensure that everyone upholds the Public Health Act and indeed law and order in general. To entrench law and order trading in our cities and towns, the internal security agencies shall help build capacity in the local authorities for vigorous and sustainable enforcement of the Public Health Act and its regulations. Trading in our cities and towns, therefore, has to be carried out within the confinement of the local authorities, laws and statutes, and in order, in an orderly manner. Ladies and gentlemen, other security operations aimed at keeping the illegal harvesting and mining of and, and mining of Mukula and Mukula trees and gold respectively continues in the same um, manner as before, 
our security officers in the border in the border areas have however been directed to remain alert and keep all transaction transnational crimes including human trafficking so the operations in some of these areas will continue especially to those uh, illegal traders and those that come to exploit gold in some areas, especially Eastern Province. Ladies and gentlemen, my government has also observed with concern the tendency to promote lawlessness and anarchy by groups opposed to our democratically elected government. I must therefore send a timely warning. And timely warning must be conveyed by you, dear colleagues from the press. Accommodating the divergent views does not mean providing space for individuals and groups bent on sowing seeds of discontent, of discord in the country by spreading falsehoods and promoting anarchy. Our democratic dispensation does not include providing platforms for demagogues and intolerant groups bent on taking political power through any means. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, <coughs> spreading falsehoods in Zambia has assumed epidemic proportions with disgruntled politicians even casting doubts on the loyalty and the commitment of our honor, the vice president, to the patriotic front as a party, President Lungu, and indeed our country. Let me say this that uh, our honor, the vice president of this country, Ms. Mutukwa, winner. Remains resolute in our commitment to Zambia. The Patriot Front and indeed the leadership of President Lungu. The entire leadership of the Patriot Front and the government remains united and focused on fighting poverty and hostile cliques bent on undermining the development of Zambia and its people for their selfish gain. And my appeal to these disgruntled characters is to leave the name of the Vice President out of their mischievous activities. We have been with her through difficult times and we can't doubt her commitment that comes into the party and indeed to the President of the Republic of Zambia who she ran into an election with as a running mate. Given the low levels to which disgruntled political elements are willing to stoop to, as Minister responsible for internal security, I have a duty to provide timely advice to those whose conduct is bordering on criminality. And law of conduct in the name of politics, including spreading falsehoods by any persons or groups, shall henceforth be dealt with decisively in accordance with the law, without fear of favor. Fellow citizens, ladies and gentlemen, despite the existence of uh, these groupings are referred to and organizations who seem to be dedicated to promoting anarchy in our country and tarnishing its image and that of the leadership. I am comfortable to say that the overall security situation in the country remains stable. The security institutions shall continue to monitor the activities of the disgruntled and democratic elements and let me emphasize this the security institutions shall continue 
to monitor the activities of the disgruntled and, and, and democratic elements bent on undermining governance institutions and law and order. And they will have no space and no place to hide. Anyone found wanting shall therefore be brought to book, like I said, without fear or favor. And there will be no sacred cows. We must, as a people, ensure that our conduct is at all times within the confines of the law. The government remains committed to preserving and deepening our democracy. Every Zambian can help the deepening of democracy by being truthful and honest in all our debates and engagements, and especially you, our colleagues from the media. Demeaning and dehumanizing other citizens are things we, as citizens, must avoid. Let us debate freely, but with respect for each other and decorum expected in our culture and indeed in any civilized society. Fellow citizens, we have a duty to work together and entrench democratic tenants in our politics. We can all play our different roles within the confines of the law and our rich cultural backgrounds. My government therefore remains committed to the rule of law and the preservation of the integrity of our governance and security institutions. This calls for discipline for all of us privileged to work in different governance and security institutions. We must also guard against our institutions falling prey to manipulation by special interest groups focused solely on entrenching their narrow economic interests at the expense of our people. And I must appeal to these disgruntled characters to stay away from our men and women in uniform because these are trained citizens whose mandate is to protect the integrity of the nation. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, we must uphold the laws of our land at all times to be a successful and prosperous nation in line with the vision 2030. It is also essential to do everything we can to ensure our country retains its, its reputation as an oasis of peace and shining example of peace and stability. You have seen how much, how many of people we have hosted from countries where law and order has broken down, and yet we haven't had a time where we have sent people in huge numbers running away from their own their homes. Our peaceful nature as a people and the stability of our country are key pillars of our development and prosperity. Any attempt to derail public order by disgruntled elements are bound to fail. Our country, therefore, remains peaceful. Law-abiding members of the public should carry on with their lives. We can enhance our security further, however, by reporting any suspicious clandestine activities to law enforcement agencies. That is essential to deny criminals and disgruntled elements room to undermine the peace and stability of our country. The security institutions shall continue to defend and protect our government institutions and indeed our civilized way of life. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I wish to end by thanking you for your attention and allowing me to wish 
the injured in the traffic accidents reported during the Easter holidays, a quick recovery, <clears throat> and in the same vein, I extend my sincere heartfelt condolences to the families of those who unfortunately lost their lives during the whole week. May their souls, the souls of our departed fellow citizens, rest in peace. Thank you very much. That was the press statement from the Honorable Minister of Home Affairs. We understand that uh, events of this nature that have actually to do with the national security always attract a lot of uh, questions. So this time around now, we shall invite you, the media, to ask questions. And before you pose your question, we want you to tell us your name and the media house where you are coming from. So ready, hands are up. Then um, we'll be taking three questions. Then we'll allow the minister to react to that. So I'll start with the youth sergeant. Good morning, Minister. Good morning, thank you. My name is Stephen Mbula. I'm from Zambia Daily Mail. Um, you've stated that the security of the nation is stable and um, uh, that um, the security wings are on top of things. Um, now, there's been, um, you've been mentioned yourself, but in particular, Minister of Home Affairs, that you are victimizing um, Mr. Chima Kambuli through the wings of the police and other security wings. So we just wanted to get um, your clarification on that. And then um, I would like also to know, um, it's been reported by a, a citizen of this republic, Mr. Winter Kalimba, that there is a party that uh, seems to be indulging in homosexuality. Now, by the laws of this republic, it's an offense. We would like to know if uh, your ministry will institute investigations. And then um, finally, the... You want to take all the questions? <laughs> yeah, okay, please go ahead. I don't know, Minister, if you could be in a position to state how much the uh, government has spent on the operation that was on the streets, which involved uh, the, the army and the air force. And um, the elements you've mentioned, is it a political party? Is it the groups of disgruntled citizens? And are they a political party? Who are they? So the three questions from uh, Steve are enough. Let's allow the minister <coughs> to react to that. Uh, maybe I can take uh, two more. Two more? So okay. Yes, sir. Good morning. My name is uh, Chusa Stroma from Times of Tatu. Honorable, I would like to get your, your comment or the position of the ministry with regard to the raging debate on the, pres the president's parent. On Another the president's hand? what? Yes. Yes. Are you sure it's parent in your citizenship? Yes. Which is which? <laughs> <laughs> Another hand in the corner there. Yes, madam. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Mvula, uh, you posed three questions. The first one you're asking whether uh, there is uh, some element of optimizing Honorable Chimbakambi. Uh, first of all, I want to state that as citizens, we need to be um, sincere to our, with ourselves. You recall very well that uh, sometime last year, His Excellency the President informed the nation that uh, there were a few of his cabinet ministers 
who were reported to be involved in craft dealings and corrupt activities. His, His Excellency was dared to start acting. And it would appear the moment he touched the, peop the person people never expected, it seems to have turned around. But when you say fighting corruption, I think you should be proposing as citizens, even as you sympathize with victims, the solutions, how we should fight. If you are saying the president or the government is victimizing people, then you should be proposing the best ways to deal with corruption. Because what has happened is unprecedented. <coughs> a sitting head of state demoting someone from his cabinet on allegations of corruption and puts this person <coughs> available for the investigative agencies to do their job as they requested. And now when they start doing their job, it becomes victimizing. Isn't that hypocrisy? The president has been very clear to all of us, all of us as ministers, that when you are caught up in <coughs> such issues, you will have no time to defend anyone, but to make all of us available, because we are not equally above the law. As to whether me who has been cited by Mr. Chimbaka Mwili, I, I, you may wish to know that the Anti-Corruption Commission does not even fall under the Minister of Home Affairs, first and foremost. Even when he was uh, dating you, the media, giving you falsehoods about me, about vehicles that you thought I had, uh, I had in my position, I'm sure you all expected me to come back to you and start ranting in the same way he was doing. But I am an elected member of parliament who belongs to institutions Parliament, where I started making those allegations, require that uh, all of us declare what we possess at any given time as part of the law to that institution. So when he made those rantings, I simply went to the institution where we belong, himself and myself. And I'm sure you read the ruling from the speaker. And I would have loved that to be concluded because he needed to come and stand at the door of shame for telling lies. And I did challenge uh, you, our colleagues in the media, to follow up with that because he had promised you to bring the, the proof of what he was alleging. So what reason would I have to victimize him if I didn't victimize him when he was uh, uh, telling falsehoods about myself? Because there are institutions that we can all run to in order to clear our names. So those uh, accusations are just baseless, and I think he wants to draw public sympathy. But in our quest to enforce the law, we don't look at the faces. And we don't look at the, uh, the, the, the status of an individual. And that's why... When someone is before the courts of law, because we are not Alpha and Omega ourselves, our law enforcement will do their part, just as the ACs are doing their part, and then they go to the courts. And they call, it's up to the courts to decide whether the person indeed is found wanting or not. And the, it's, you have seen there are so many people. We also have the correctional service on, on one hand where we remind people. So there are also procedures. There are those that for him, it's not one, several. And for us, it's usual business to make those that are in our custody available to uh, access health care when they need it. And when they are done, they are back to make sure that they expedite they are processed to clear themselves before the courts of law. And that's how it works. So I don't know, because I, can't, I, I don't stand in the dock. So how can I determine somebody? It's on me to go and stand in the dock to, 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 to try them, to prosecute them. So those are baseless claims, and I think uh, people of Zambia should understand 
that when they are calling for all of us to be accountable, be it me, be the next person, we must go through the processes and get cleared. And that's it. Uh, with regards to the uh, issue you mentioned, uh, uh, President Minta Kavimba <coughs> of the Rainbow Party. Well, um, we don't work with um, uh, just statements. If indeed uh, his revelations are true, it's certainly regrettable. Because the people behind the social Socialist Party are well-known figures, and some of them have uh, been opinion setters in this country. And if indeed there is some truth to these uh, facts, like I'm saying, it's certainly regrettable, because then it will be difficult for people to trust uh, certain individuals who conduct themselves in what I can just describe as area older than thou. But for us, this is not, uh, these are not just matters uh, of immorality. Uh, the laws are there. The laws are there to deal with the, such immoral activities, homosexuality. And so investigations will be launched to establish whether there are some elements of proof to that uh, to those reparations. And if it's found, then the necessary action will be taken by the law enforcement agencies. And also, you may wish to know that uh, parties are regretted. Their conduct is regretted under the laws of Zambia, CAP 119 of the laws of Zambia, uh, under which all these organizations are registered has got its own provisions and those provisions can be evoked and that can include even the registering an organization which is inimical to the state. Uh, the cost of operations, uh, you may wish to know that those were joint operations and the leading institutions uh, were very well known. Uh, Minister of Wealth was leading um, in terms of the operations. So I think they'll be better pressed to uh, share with you uh, the cost of the operations. But like I said, we were grateful to all the stakeholders, Minister of Health, local government, the Vice President's office, for the leadership they provided, and um, uh, that uh, ensured the success of the uh, operations. With regards to the groupings uh, that I was alluding to, it's open, it's open debate. When a president of a small little party starts questioning uh, um, uh, the citizenship of a sitting head of state through primitive way of doing politics, it's public knowledge. And I'm in, I, I'm in receipt of some document which has been sent to the public protector, for example, by one Mike Mulongot, where he's asking the public protector to look into this matter. But you see, Mr. Mike Mulongot, with due respect, trying to regain his political relevance, could sink so low of not even understanding the governance institutions. Because as a former cabinet minister, he should have known that uh, interpretation of part four of the constitution of Zambia, which provides for citizenship, is a portfolio function of this ministry here. So is the enforcement of the revised Act Number 33 of 2016, Citizenship Act, is enforced here. And this minister sitting here chairs the Citizenship Board, 
which determines matters of citizenship. He should have known that. But because he's petty, <coughs> and these are part of the schemes they have come up with, which we have been following and monitoring, like I said. You've got the, the UPND and its leadership running to parliament to try and uh, float an impeachment motion. You've got this campaign of calling people corrupt when they can't even provide any proof to try and beat the government, like I said, against its people. So these groupings are well known. Some of them are <coughs> some of them political parties. And some of them, even political party leaders, who have participated in elections, not once, but more than four times in some cases. <coughs> and maybe those uh, legislators who are thinking we should try and deal with this desperation. Because when someone participates in, in elections and they keep losing perpetually, their desperation can get into dangerous levels. Maybe they could be well-founded. And I think as a nation, we must, be find, we must find remedy to that. So, in short, there are some political parties, and this has, there are some uh, non-government organizations, and you have seen some of them even going to international media <coughs> to try and paint this country black as if they are not citizens. And if they, as if they think, probably when they, <coughs> God forbid, got a chance to rule this country, they will have another Zambia, which then they can come and paint green. But like I've stated, we are monitoring the activities, and some of them uh, should count their days number. So um, I think partially I've responded to the question that was posed by Sichone and uh, Madam Mwaka Mfukwe, because you all were asking about the issues of uh, the citizenship. And let me assure you that the President of the Republic <coughs> of Zambia is a Zambian. As a Zambian by birth and the born of Zambian citizens. That's why he was allowed to participate in the previous election. That's why he was allowed to stand as a member of parliament initially. And that's how he has been an eminent legal practitioner for so many years, helping others even deal with these issues of citizenship. So, people of Zambia should not be swayed by this kind of primitive politics being perpetuated by disgruntled people like Mulongot, who is trying to find relevance uh, on the political scene. And I think maybe President Darabi, who fired him uh, at the very reason, because this one fellow was fired for failure to manage his ambitions. But let him find relevance in a meaningful way. As for the issue of refugees, um, I, I wish to share with you and uh, the country that indeed we have seen a drastic reduction in the inflows of uh, refugees uh, from across DRC. As we speak now, we are still standing at 15,000 uh, refugees, uh, out of which 2,700 have been relocated from the transit center to the new Mantapala uh, refugee settlement place. And so this gives us a bit of comfort. And we hope that uh, uh, the, our, our brothers and sisters uh, can have their country stabilized and so that they can uh, return to their homes. Thank you very much. Do we still have some questions? Yes, sir. <coughs> uh, good afternoon, Honorable. Good afternoon. I'm Mike Sitchura from uh, the Phoenix. Uh, Honorable, you spoke about uh, security in Zambia being stable, and uh, we don't, do not have any Zambians that may be seeking asylum also. I wanted to find out from your office whether uh, the security wings have accepted that uh, 
musician Pilato was, his life was not under threat. And uh, whether you've managed to get information on the tape. <laughs> you know, uh, like I said, uh, when I said we Zambians must be responsible, all of us collectively, and disseminate information which is accurate. And you, our colleagues from the media, must be in the forefront. If asked you, Stula, how do you describe the situation in this country? Simple. I'll just be sincere with me. I mean, you're a citizen, you're a journalist. If asked you... I wouldn't say it's, uh, uh, it's negative. I would say it's the way you've stated. But uh, the, the problem I have is a situation whereby uh, on the outside, people are saying Zambia is not uh, a stable country because its citizens are running away. Because the uh, security wings are failing to provide security. Do you share that view with those who are talking like that? I don't. We are gathering here. And I'm sure from here you go back to do your job. And you have been disseminating information. All of you, you have, we have got so many media institutions around. And you have been hosting people who express their views openly. Tell me, if you <coughs> of recently heard of anyone going to pounce on a radio station, drag someone for negative sentiments against government? We are following this. There's someone who has got hair, yeah, I don't know if I how we can even describe that, who sometimes talks things that are negative, and we are watching patiently. So, if you decide, probably you have visited Chiwaria where there are so many substances that get into people's heads. And in your own head, create your own fears. Should that be an issue of government? Should that be an issue of government? There are people that sing songs here. So many songs. No one has run away here to go and hide anywhere. And say as I am seeking. So let's be responsible all of us, including yourselves. <clears throat> you are the only ones who can clean the image outside there. Not it's not just about government, mind you. How would you feel yourself? You are a Zambian and you go to a place where people are saying Zambia is is is, is a failed state. It doesn't matter what you are. We who are governing today are just on the tour of duty. We are not the first ones, neither are we going to be the last ones. But we all have got a responsibility to preserve the integrity of this nation, the peace that our forefathers fought for and shed blood for. We can compete, and that's why we go to regular elections. It's not like other countries where, you know, having elections is, uh, is such unusual. And maybe perhaps I must also take advantage of that to say that, uh, of course, you have seen events around the region. And what we should do as Zambians is to learn from good practices. We are happy and that we are part of Troika Organ on uh, politics and security, defense and security of the region. So when we see peaceful transitions of government, for example, Angola, recently we have just seen um, Botswana and many other, that's what we want to see in other countries and let's understand our jurisdictions what does your democracy uh, entail before we start comparing with other uh, uh, other countries so my dear colleague there's no such a person as we know who is genuinely out of this country for fears on their lives. The Zamba police is here to protect every citizen, regardless of their status, color or creed, religion, tribe. Theirs is to protect citizens. Thank you. We still have some more questions? Yes, one. Yeah. Yes, um, my name is Zephania uh, Zulu from Movie TV. I just want to draw your attention to the impeachment motion. Uh, the new information we are getting is that the, the allegation that 
there are individuals, MPs who have been paid to push this motion in parliament. And then as a government, what is the position? Have you, have you <coughs> established this organization paying these people and who are those people who have been paid? <laughs> Thank you so much, Stephanie. Uh, well, it's very, those, when when uh, statements such as uh, uh, you're alluding to are made, uh, for us we only um, ride on the truth and facts. So um, until there the, the, the is some uh, probe into the matters uh, being alleged. Uh, we can't say this one and that one. Those are open uh, statements. And so for us here, yeah, and uh, speaking for my law enforcement agencies, um, there will be an assessment to see if there's need to lead well into the, such matters. Uh, with regards to the impeachment motion, um, I cannot limit my comments as a legislature because that's an institution I belong to. And I'll tell you that... Uh, I was shocked and I still remain baffled by what I saw because Parliament and the way it conducts, and I, I, I urge you, all of you colleagues in the media, to find time to understand the operations of the, the legislature, the three arms of government, um, being the judiciary, of course, the executive and the legislature. The way we conduct business is very well tabulated so that you know you are not moving with falsehoods because some people would want to mislead, to deceive the nation. Some of them, have, it's not our fault that they haven't been through that institution. But if you have been, and I was so shocked, some of them, even those that have, had been, were, 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 were also just being mischievous. You can't say we give a motion to Parliament which would come on such and such a day. I'm sure the, 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 the Madam Speaker pronounced ourselves to that effect. But, uh, you know, for us, it's baseless, frivolous, and mischievous. I'm speaking to you as an MP. And to try and copy things that happen in other jurisdictions won't help anyone. Yeah! People decide who goes to state house. And not any other shortcut. That's a message that should be sent very clearly. Because if you see some people in another jurisdiction where presidents draw their mandate from parliament, from the legislature, you, they can, and the legislature can decide to play ping pong with those presidents. Because that's where they draw the mandate from. Not from the people. A few people gathered here and say, oh, this is a president. And they can decide, oh, go, come here. You, we want you to go. It's within their, 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 their mandate, not here. Even that provision in the Constitution is not for mischievous reasons. It must be well-grounded facts. So you don't just wake up and say, I'm MP. Hey, I'm impeaching the president. Elected by the people? Where? Not in this country. So, like I'm saying, you, our colleagues, must be able to compare and contrast these jurisdictions. Where this has happened, what are the provisions? So if you want to pray to the gallery so that you can hit the headlines in some international media that I also presented a, a, an impeachment, it will end up on headlines. And you don't come crying, don't come and say, because you don't know what is... And sometimes, um, even the, 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 the legal parliamentarians who work with these leaders must guide and be sincere with their leaders. Because we saw the pressure. They were even misleading themselves and no, the house was not going to a journey until that motion was tabled. Where? There's no one who can dictate your now parliament should run, either from outside or from inside. It doesn't work like that. And that's how you saw them chickening out, because they knew. Probably if they wanted to play games and they wanted to, uh, uh, to show that the, 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 the house could not adjourn so that we could go and see our electorates who are who are our employers, we could have gone to voting so that what they are claiming to say they've got our people, PF, we could have seen. But they ran away because they were trying to avoid the embarrassment. So that's what I can say to you, my dear colleague, about that uh, uh, 
mischievous attempt, which is just <coughs> one of those schemes I was talking about. But I've told you, to be old is to be for armed. We are not going to sit back and allow that kind of uh, uh, activities to continue. Dear colleagues, thank you so very much, and I hope you enjoyed the Easter holiday.